And there are machines, very good celebrity. Demystifying technology and microfinance, very good. Mizuni System, yes, CEO, Mr. Cameron Gold is Scott Marshall and Bidama with your body. But now, according to the agenda, Mr. Cameron Gold is Scott, CEO of Mizuni Systems, will deliver demystifying technology and microfinance. Before I invite the speaker, please allow me to introduce about the biography of the speaker. Mr. Cameron Gold is Scott is the CEO and co-founder of Mizoni Services, the company behind the award-winning cloud banking system, Mizoni. Cameron has over 10 years of microfinance and digital finance experience. Starting his career as an independent consultant, working with TJAS, he managed the first um, PSA, piece of microfinance integrations, in East Africa before co-founding the world's first 100% mobile-only MFI in Kenya in 2009. After managing the company's microfinance operation in Kenya in 2011, Cameron moved into the IT team and was responsible for the design and launch of an SMS module for payment reminders and the Muzoni tablet application for digital data capture. In 2013, Cameron founded Muzoni Services with Mr. Sandu van der Hayden. Now, I would like to honorably invite Mr. Cameron Goldiscore, CEO of Muzoni Systems, to deliver demystifying technology in microfinance. Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to start off by saying it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, and I wanted to thank all of the speakers who spoke before. Um, I really enjoyed the presentations and most of all would like to thank Thetia Works for organizing this excellent event. Uh, I appreciate that we're running a little bit late and I'm the final session, so I will, uh, I will try and uh, get us back on schedule. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit today about uh, try to demystify some of the technology in microfinance and offer a, a a path or a journey for microfinance organizations to look at technology um, and therefore improve their efficiency. But first, a little bit of background information on Missoni. We're a microfinance software company. We have a cloud-based core banking system. Uh, and our goal is to try and help microfinance organizations to use digital financial services to improve their efficiency and, uh, and extend their outreach into the remote rural areas where the majority of the unbanked live. Here in Myanmar, we're partnered with Vizia Works, but around the world, we work with about 90 different microfinance organizations. We didn't start off as a software company, though. We actually started off by setting up our own microfinance organization in Kenya in 2008. Uh, and this was the first 100% uh, mobile-only microfinance organization in the world. So everything was carried out over M-Pesa, all loan repayments, all loan disbursements, and all savings deposits. Uh, and that was our background. That's how I got involved in technology and, uh, and how I started uh, well, becoming very enthusiastic about using technology to improve efficiency. So why the focus on technology? Well, we heard in the opening presentation that uh, well, uh, all of the kind of incredibly rapid changes that have taken place in Myanmar and around the world in the last five years. I don't think, uh, well, certainly not myself, but a number of the speakers wouldn't have been able to stand up and give our talks five years ago. Uh, the technology just didn't exist. So it's moved very, very quickly, and, and that's opened up opportunities. Um, there are still a very, very large number of unbanked people in Myanmar, and, uh, and the majority of them live in remote areas. And, uh, and the opportunity is to see if we can use technology to bring financial services and financial inclusion to them. At the same time, customer expectations have changed. People now expect to be able to interact with their microfinance organization over their phone uh, or over the internet or through ATMs in some cases. Uh, and, uh, and so in order to keep up and in order to carry on offering a good customer service, uh, that's the other reason microfinance organizations should look at technology. Uh, and last but not least, um, we're slowly starting to see it in the market, but you're going to see more digital, like pure digital financial players entering the market and starting to compete with microfinance organizations. They're not going to have the, uh, the 
kind of the burden of a branch network and infrastructure or a legacy core banking system. They're going to come in with um, pure mobile-only applications and start lending directly to customers and start to compete. Uh, and that's why microfinance organizations should also look at, uh, at technology. But don't just believe me. This is the Financial Inclusion Banana Skins report from last year. And for people who don't know about this, uh, they ask thousands of microfinance practitioners from all around the world what they see as the, the number one biggest risk in microfinance that they are facing. And last year, technology was the fastest moving risk. So it moved from 15th up until up to fourth place. And, uh, and I think that just shows that uh, it's not just here, this is global, but all around the world, microfinance practitioners are, are looking at technology and thinking, if we don't embrace it, we might be okay for a few years, but in five years' time, um, the market will be very different. So if you are one of these microfinance organizations worried about technology, um, where do you start? Like, what is the journey? Uh, and this is how we see it. Um, so we see technology and microfinance as a journey. Uh, and this is the journey that, that I took the microfinance organization that we started uh, in Kenya on um, and have now helped through Masoni uh, lots and lots of microfinance organizations around the world. Uh, I'm not going to pretend that this is the only journey. Um, there are probably lots and lots of different ways to approach technology in microfinance. Uh, but this is one that we know and understand and we think is logical. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more about it over the course of today. You'll notice that along the bottom axis, it says more automation. So as you, you, know, as you get more and more tech driven, there's more automation. Uh, I just want to clarify right now that I, I believe that the, kind of the core aspect of microfinance is going to remain the relationship between the loan officer and the end customer. Uh, when I'm talking about technology, I'm not trying to get rid of the loan officers in microfinance. Um, uh, I think the understanding of the customer's business and the, the value add, that's what differentiates microfinance. Uh, instead, I'm trying to use technology to get rid of the bureaucracy and inefficiency in microfinance, and in doing that to free up more time for the loan officers to spend with their customers, to spend going out into rural areas and, and helping them grow their businesses. So the technology journey always starts off with a core banking system. Um, you should have a, a modern, robust core banking system that gives you good data quality um, and follows microfinance best practice. Um, and this is what we provide at Masoni. It, it's cloud-based, so all you need to access it is, a, is an internet connection and a modern web browser. Uh, and because it's cloud-based, it's a consolidated database as well. So all your data is in one place. You can see what's happening in your branches in real time. Uh, you don't have to wait for reports to be sent in from the field to learn what's happening. And a lot of the organizations we work with, uh, this is the only bit of the Masoni technology stack that they use. Um, they might not have started the journey of uh, kind of going through towards increased automation, uh, but they still get a lot of benefits from it. Um, just by having a good core banking system um, that follows uh, good workflows and is user friendly uh, and gives you good reports, you can grow very rapidly, you can keep your portfolio quality uh, under control uh, and it gives you the foundations for future growth. But from there you can start to experiment and, and even technology is, as basic as SMS can bring a lot of, a lot of added benefits. Uh, we have an SMS module in Masoni, it's built into the main platform. So you don't have to do any third-party integrations. It just works out of the box. And, um, and we send out about 10 to 15,000 messages every day. That could be payment reminders. It could be arrears follow-up messages, marketing campaigns, or just happy birthday messages. Uh, and the goal is to improve the amount of communication that you have with your clients and to increase transparency uh, as a result of that. Uh, and by doing that, you can also have an impact on, on reducing fraud. And I just wanted to use one example of an organization in Zimbabwe that we work with. Uh, they've got about 20,000 customers, and they use Masoni to, uh, to send their customers messages whenever anything happens on their account. So if a repayment is made or withdrawal is made, the customer gets sent a text message. Uh, and one day last year, uh, a loan was approved in the system, and so the customer got sent a text message going, congratulations, your loan has been approved. Uh, the only problem was that this lady had not applied for a loan at all. And she was very confused uh, and generally quite scared as well. So she went to her branch, she complained to the branch manager, 
And, um, and to cut a long story short, the organization uncovered a fraud uh, and realized that dummy loans and dummy clients had been created. Uh, and that was uh, discovered with the, you know, the very, very basic technology that's SMS. If you want to get a little bit more advanced, um, I mean, everyone uh, has heard of M-Pesa from Kenya. Um, but in Myanmar, we've got m -Pitizan, we've got MPT coming into the market and wave money, I, I think we all know. Um, and I don't think many microfinance organizations are, are yet using these for loan repayments, but that seems to be the logical next step. Uh, and we're in discussions with MPT and Wave Money to integrate uh, the back end of our system with them so that any organization using our platform can, uh, their customers can make a loan repayment or a savings deposit and it will get pushed straight into the system. Uh, and that, that's kind of based on our experience of Africa. Um, I, I don't know yet if it'll work to the same extent in, in Myanmar. Um, but we do know that people are increasingly comfortable with mobile financial services. And this brings a lot of benefits in terms of cutting down the amount of cash handling that happens at group meetings, um, reducing the risk of fraud, and giving an electronic audit trail for every single transaction that's coming through. Because it's come through mobile, it also happens in real time, which means you have accurate PAR reports. So let's imagine that you've, you've got a cloud-based core banking system, you're using SMS to communicate with your clients, and, um, and your clients are making their repayments over mobile money. Uh, what's next? Uh, well, we asked ourselves that question um, about, about seven years ago, and we went out into the field and, and realized that all of our loan officers still had huge amounts of paperwork. And whenever they came back into the branches, uh, to make a loan decision, they would have big piles of client registration forms, loan application forms, group reports, business appraisals, and, um, and we thought that actually we were nowhere near as efficient as we wanted to be. So we built a tablet application, uh, and it's aimed at loan officers. It's designed to digitalize all of the previously paper-based processes. So it'll do client registrations, it'll do loan applications, uh, any type of business appraisal or form or, or survey that you'd like to carry out, and viewing reports as well. Uh, and crucially, it works in online mode and offline mode. Uh, and the idea is that your loan officers no longer need to come into the branch in the morning to download their reports of which groups they're gonna see that day. And because of that, they can go further afield. They can penetrate more remote rural areas, uh, areas that maybe before it was too expensive to open a branch in. Uh, so just to continue the journey, um, and what's coming next? Well. We heard today that, um, that smartphone ownership in, in Myanmar is, is over 80% now. And, uh, and so we wanted to launch a, an application no longer aimed at the loan officers, but end, uh, aimed at the actual end customers. And uh, this will be launched at the end of March. And it will do balance inquiries, account transfers, and allow customers to apply for loans straight from their mobile phone. Um, Depending on how that goes and depending on how the conversations go with MPT and, uh, and the other mobile network operators, we'd also like to then start seeing if we can integrate the application we're building with their services so that you can do withdrawals straight from your, um, from your MFI savings account into your mobile wallet and back and forward. Um, but that's not there yet. Uh, watch this space. So if you are bringing all of this data in, if you've got um, your forms are digitalized, your repayments are digital, um, and clients are applying for their loans over their mobile phones, then, then the next step there is credit scoring or using integrations with CRBs to automate the data. Uh, and we've done that a lot in other countries. We've integrated with credit scoring companies so that you can get uh, a recommended loan size the moment a client loan application comes in. And I'm happy to recommend a few credit scoring companies that we've worked with if anyone's interested. Um, but you can get a lot of the benefits of credit scoring just with a CRB. And we've integrated with credit reference bureaus in other countries. Um, and we are, we're very enthusiastically waiting for the CRB to be set up here so that we can integrate as well. So I started off the, the, kind of the, the journey by saying that it all starts off with a, with a modern core banking system. Uh, and that's because none of these third-party integrations that I've spoken about would be possible uh, if you don't have an open platform. Uh, you need to have, like, when thinking about how to leverage digital financial services, you need to have a system that, uh, that makes it very, very low cost and fast to plug and play third party software onto it. And, and that's what Masoni is. So it's built on a platform of RESTful APIs. All the API documentation is available online. 
and, um, and we have a support team able to help people manage the integrations. So if you're a microfinance organization and you wanted to build your own tablet application, you didn't want to use ours, that's completely fine. We'll just help you integrate it using our APIs. We've integrated with credit reference bureaus, I mentioned, but also with CRM platforms like Salesforce as well, or third-party accounting systems. The idea is to get everything speaking to each other. And just to give you an example of how that works, um, one of our customers in, uh, in Zimbabwe launched a USSD menu on top, of, um, on top of our platform. We didn't build this, they just integrated it on top of us. Uh, for people who don't know what USSD is, it's, um, it's when you dial on your phone star one, two, three hash, and, uh, and you'll use it normally for managing your mobile account or for topping up your airtime balance. Um, but in Kenya, most people don't have, sorry, in Zimbabwe, most people didn't have smartphones. And so they wanted to offer a service where people could do balance inquiries um, just through feature phones. So they, they built their own USSD menu, and you can see a couple of screenshots there. Um, the functionality was pretty basic. It, it allowed you to do a balance inquiry, um, it allowed you to apply for a loan, and it allowed you to uh, change your PIN number. That was it. Very, very straightforward at the beginning. Um, but within the first month of launching it, 10,000 of their customers had signed up, and those 10,000 customers had done 100,000 balance inquiries. And, um, and that amazed me. It just showed how much demand there was uh, just for people to always be checking what the balance in their account was. Uh, whenever they made a repayment, they wanted to check it had been reflected correctly. Uh, and what I hope was the result of this is that um, the level of trust between the clients and the organization grew, and the tr level of transparency increased. Um, this was the, uh, just finishing up with a quote, this was the, the feedback from the head of innovation, or the chief innovation officer of the microfinance organization. Uh, about the value add that it brought for the customers uh, and for the loan officers as well. And I won't read out the quota, I'll, I'll just leave it up there, but what amazes me about this is actually that this organization has a chief innovation officer. Um, and very few microfinance organizations I know have someone who is uh, not quite in operations, not quite in IT, um, responsible for sitting in between the two departments, driving through change, thinking about how to leverage technology in the future. Uh, so in terms of where we operate, um, you'll probably have picked up from, from this talk that most of our experience and background was in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, but we've been working with one organization here um, called Heyman Capital, who I, who I can see in the audience, thank you for coming, um, since there for three years now, and very, very happy. But um, um, we've recently partnered with PizzaWorks as well. And together with PizzaWorks, we support five organizations here. Um, but why talk about technology uh, unless we're actually saying that it has an impact? Um, well, I mentioned at the beginning that you don't necessarily need to be using the mobile and the tablets and credit scoring to have added value. Um, just having a good system makes it possible for you to grow very, very quickly. And, uh, and apologies, Nordebeck, I'm using Heyman Capital as an example here. But in three years since you've been using the platform, you've grown to over 40,000 customers. And, and I don't think that's only because of the technology. Um, clearly, there's a very good operations team in place. Um, you know, there's a good business strategy, good products. I think technology is just the foundation, but you still need that foundation to help you grow very rapidly. Um, and then when you start thinking about the added value of mobile money, SMS, and tablet applications, that's when you start seeing the, the real efficiency gains in the future. Um, and I think, I, I promise to try and keep it relatively short, so I think I'll, I'll wrap up there. Uh, I'll just leave it with a few quotes, but say that I'm here for the rest of the week. Um, if anyone would like to, uh, to have a chat or would like to learn more about Masoni, please let me know and I'd love to come and say hello. Um, or of course you can chat with anyone at the PizzaWorks team as well and they're our official partners. So um, well, thank you very much and I'm not sure who I'm handing over to now, but, <laughs> but thank you. <laughs>